Hello and welcome friends. In this video tutorial we will be looking at the steps of glycolysis. The first reaction is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by hexokinase and it requires ATP and magnesium ion. The gamma phosphate of ATP transferred to the C6 hydroxyl of glucose making the glucose 6-phosphate. The second reaction is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglucoisomerase. The glucose of glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose by a mechanism in which the ring is opened and reformed to make fructose 6-phosphate. The third step or the third reaction is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase and as the name suggests it must need the access to ATP as well as it need the access to magnesium ion. The gamma phosphate of ATP transferred to the C1 hydroxyl of fructose 6 phosphate making it fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. The fourth reaction is the conversion of fructose 1 6 bisphosphate to glyceraldehyde C phosphate or GAP and also the production of dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The reaction is catalyzed by aldolase and it generates two 3-carbon phosphorylated carbohydrates. The linear form of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved between the third and the fourth carbon generating the glyceraldehyde C-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The fifth reaction is the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DAP to glyceraldehyde C-phosphate or GAP. The reaction is catalyzed by triose phosphate isomerase and it is necessary because only glyceraldehyde C phosphate can proceed through the glycolysis. The dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP is converted to glyceraldehyde C phosphate through an enidiolate intermediate. These metabolites are maintained at equilibrium because of cytocatalytic perfection of triose phosphate isomerase. The sixth reaction is the conversion of glyceraldehyde C-phosphate to 1,6-bisphosphoglycerate. This reaction is catalyzed by glyceraldehyde C-phosphate dehydrogenase and it requires NAD plus and inorganic phosphate. Now they incorporate this inorganic phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to convert it into glyceraldehyde 1,3-bisphosphate. The carbon-1 Carbonyl of glyceraldehyde C-phosphate is oxidized and subsequently phosphorylated to yield 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The seventh reaction is the conversion of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase and it requires ADP. Now this is the step where ATP is generated by attaching the phosphate from the substrate 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So it's a substrate level phosphorylation. The C1 phosphate of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is transferred to ADP generating 3-phosphoglycerate and ATP. The generation of ATP is the example of substrate level phosphorylation. The eighth reaction is the conversion of 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate. The reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate mutase. 3-phosphoglycerate is phosphorylated by a phosphohistidine residue of the enzyme generating 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate which phosphorylates to yield 2-phosphoglycerate and regenerates the phosphohistidine enzyme. The ninth reaction is the conversion of 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. This reaction is catalyzed by enolase and it requires magnesium ion. 2-phosphoglycerate is dehydrated to form phosphoenol pyruvate and water. The tenth reaction is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. The reaction is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase and it requires ADP, magnesium ion and potassium ion to function properly. Phosphoenol pyruvate is dephosphorylated and tautomerizes to form pyruvate. The phosphate is transferred to ADP to convert the ADP into adenosine triphosphate. This completes the stage 2 of the glycolysis in which 2 molecules of NADH and 4 molecules of ATP are generated per molecule of glucose. Now here is the whole summary. The glucose plus 2 NAD plus plus 2 ADP plus 2 inorganic phosphate converts into 2 pyruvate 2 NADH plus 
2 ATP, 2 H2O and 4 H+. Now ATP during the glycolysis, the initial investment of 2 molecules but the gaining is 4 molecules so the total gain is 2 molecules of ATP. During the glycolysis, 2 molecules of NADH are produced. Each molecule of NADH can lead up to the production of 3 molecules of ATP during the oxidative phosphorylation. So 2 NADH molecule can give rise to 3 into 2 equals to 6 ATP molecules. And finally, pyruvate is a relatively reduced state and under aerobic conditions it can be oxidized further by the citric acid cycle to yield even more ATP. That is the end of the... And I hope it will help you. Thank you.